Hello, kitties. I'm your host, Douglas at Drowned Boy Productions, and you're watching the 31 Days of Trick or Treat. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of the 31 Days of Trick or Treat where we're taking a look at a new Trick or Treat Studios product every single day for 31 days. For the first day we took a look at the Sam mask from Trick or Treat. On the second day we took a look at the Sam handbag. After that we dove deep into the Black Lagoon to take a look at the creature from the Black Lagoon mask. Then we took a look at some nice vintage style wall decor from the Universal Monsters line. After that we took a look at the evil gremlin who was wreaking havoc and then we went and got some nice fried chicken from Captain Spaulding's. This week has kind of been all over the place so we're going to go ahead and close it out with another odd one. Because today we're taking a look at the EC Comics Tales from the Crypt Quicksand Zombie. Like most of you watching, Tales from the Crypt was a huge part of my childhood. Though it seems that most people really only watched the movie and the shows, stuff like that, whereas I actually did enjoy the comics as well. I was a huge comic book nerd, and though I can't appreciate superheroes and I do enjoy a lot of that stuff as well, I was all about the horror. Any horror stuff that I could get my hands on, whether it be zombie comics, Spawn, Tales from the Crypt, any other old EC Comics horror, I loved it and read it anytime I got a chance. And those iconic illustrations are still some of the most memorable pieces of my childhood. And one of my favorites was the Quicksand Zombie, and Justin did a great job bringing this guy back to life. It's such a cool, detailed sculpt that really looks like the illustration, but also has that punchiness to it, kind of like a Don Post sculpt back in the day. It definitely looks like something that they would have produced at that point in time, and I think even a lot of the methods that they used to paint this thing are very, very similar to Don Post's methods. You won't be able to tell it too well in this lighting, but for the most part, he's this really dark, rotted flesh color, and then he's got this black wash over him. The teeth are, of course, this bony color, and then they hit these roots with a brown ink, and it looks like they also went through and hit some of these deeper spots in the flesh with that same brown ink. It's a pretty basic paint job, but super effective, and it looks great. Overall, just a really, really cool mask, regardless of whether or not you like the Tales from the Crypt, or if you've read them, or if you're even familiar with them at all. It's just a really, really cool Halloween mask. As for the hair on this guy, I think it looks pretty awesome as well. It is a very thin, stringy hair, and I believe that this same white hair is what they use for their Ben Tramer masks. It's very, very soft. Seems like the hair will shed out of the head very easily, so if you're styling the hair, be very gentle with it. The stock photos show it to have these really stringy, straight line pieces of hair, and if you want to take the time to pull those lines into it, you totally can. But yet again, just be very, very gentle. Don't tug the hair away too much. More so just try to bunch those pieces together. Personally, I like the really, really messy hair because it looks like real authentic white hair, all nasty and stringy on a zombie. But depending if you want to wear it or if you want to put it on display, and if you are going to display it, you can leave it as is where it looks a little bit more natural and realistic, or you can style the hair to look a bit more like the image on the tag. The way that they sculpted the eyes, they look almost entirely closed, so that could cause some problems of vision. I haven't worn this, but that is something to be careful of if you're somebody that already has a vision problem. And really, there's not a whole lot left to say about this mask, so let's go ahead and read the excerpt from the Trick or Treat Studios website. Alright, here we go. So it says it was sculpted by Justin Mabry. If you know the founders of Trick or Treat Studios, you know that they are huge fans of EC Comics, especially Tales from the Crypt, Haunt of Fear, and Vault of Horror. So when we were given the license for EC Comics directly from the Gaines family, we just about lost our minds. So without further ado, allow us to introduce the Quicksand Zombie, which is the first of three masks to kick off our EC Comics collection for 25. So when it says EC Comics collection for 25, I don't know if that means that they're going to do 25 different sculpts, 25 different characters from EC Comics in that lineup. I don't think they offer that many currently, and I don't think they have offered that many yet. So who knows which other characters they intend to do, if that's what it means. But I do know the entire lineup so far is awesome. Justin has done a great job on these sculpts. And yet again, whether you care about Tales from the Crypt or not, these are just great masks. And as for the price, they're running the average of $60 for the full overhead deluxe masks. I think that's a pretty great price, and this is a mask that doesn't really need any paint work. The paint's pretty much perfect. I don't really think there's too much you could do to improve upon it from here. The only thing you could really improve is the hair, and with what's already there, it would just take a little bit of styling. Or, I mean, if you want to replace it, you totally could, but really, this is just a great stock mask. So yeah, those are my thoughts on it. If you guys are interested in picking one of these up yourself, you can get it directly from Trick or Treat Studios or one of the plethora of retailers that they work with. There's nothing left to do but give you guys some nice close-ups of this mask. I love you all. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have been enjoying all of the 31 Days of Trick or Treat, and I'll see you next time.